whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High. The word for Most High is the word El Elyon that means the Lord of heaven and earth, the Lord of everything. And the psalmist is abiding in the shelter of God, a secret place of God that is inaccessible to other people. A place which is a refuge where only the psalmist is allowed to go. Only those who have access are allowed to go to that secret quiet place. According to the psalmist context, I believe that he is speaking something about the tent of the meeting or the tabernacle or the temple in the New Testament where there is an access for the Jewish men to go into the courts where the Gentiles are not allowed. And the psalmist is telling that that's my hiding place, a secret place. And I live in that domain, in the temple of God, in the presence of God. And what happens when the psalmist dwells in that place? I will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. In that place, the Almighty God, the El Shaddai God, the all-powerful and almighty God covers me with his shade. And the shadow is a shadow of protection. The psalmist is protected in the shelter of God. He dwells there and he longs to be there in the presence of God where he is comforted, sheltered and protected from the cares of this world. And in verse 2, the psalmist says, I will say of the Lord, in that protected place, I will say, I will confess that he is my refuge and he is my fortress in God whom I trust. When I am in that secret place and the shelter of God, there is a wall of protection around me by my God where I can find refuge and it's a fortress. I'm secure in the arms of God. The meaning over here is that in that secure place, the psalmist will keep telling to God that Lord, you are my fortress. I trust in you. You alone are there for me. And there's a constant communication between the psalmist and God over there. Growing up in the city of Bangalore, my mother had a chicken coop. Nowadays, we are, our houses are very sophisticated. We live in apartments and hardly our children have seen a chicken coop. And that's a wonderful experience of seeing how to take a newly laid egg and give it to mom and make an omelet out of it. And then mom used to keep some eggs and enable it to hatch and to see that new life that breaks out of that shell and the small chicks gather around the mother hen and then the mother senses a danger some eagle that is flying or a dog that is barking and she makes a small noise and all these chicks come under her wings no matter what the enemy or how great the enemy the chicks are protected safe sheltered in the presence of the mother and in fact that's what God is offering According to the psalmist, in the midst of all the trials and the pain and difficulty of a man's life, the journey, if you look at the psalm, it is a journey of a man's life. The psalmist has found a place in the secret place of God where he can go and is sheltered under the shadow of God, sheltered under the protection of the Lord. Can you and I say that this is true of my life? That irrespective of what is happening in my life, I have a hiding place. I have a shelter where I run to, where God is my fortress and God is my shield on a day-to-day -day basis. In the New Testament language, when we talk about the psalm, it is abiding in Christ. John chapter 15. But Jesus said, if you abide in me and my words remain in you, you will produce much fruit. And we become the disciples of Jesus. We find that comfort and that hiding place by abiding and being connected to Christ, the source of our life. And we must understand that God offers us a hiding place in him. A secret place that is not accessible by every person, but only to those whom God loves. In the book of Exodus, we can find that Moses went to Mount Sinai to receive the law of the commandments. And he spent time talking to God and God inscribed with his finger the Ten Commandments. And as Moses is carrying this law and coming down, he finds that the children of Israel are sinning. They have 
just made a golden calf and they are worshipping God. And whereas God told Moses just now that you are not supposed to make any idols and worship any other idols. Moses gets angry and he runs to the presence of God and God says, I am done with these people. My presence, I am going to withdraw. You remember Moses, my presence that helped you in Egypt. When the ten plagues were happening, I protected you. In the Red Sea, how I protected you and destroyed the enemies, the Egyptians in the Red Sea. And you people are stubborn, stiff-necked. I'm just going to withdraw my presence. Moses runs to the presence of God and Moses says, Lord, if you don't send your presence, don't send us. We cannot live without your presence. And then God reassures Moses. And he wants to see the glory of God. He wants to see the face of God. In that conversation between Moses and God, it comes to Exodus chapter 33, verse 21 to 23. The Lord said to Moses, there is a place near me where you may stand on a rock. There is a place near our God. Have you realized that? Where you and I can come and stand alone and enjoy the comfort. And that's the place that God is telling Moses. There's a place near me where you may come on a rock and stand. When my glory passes by, I will put you in a cleft in the rock and cover you with my hand. Until I have passed by. He allows us to experience him. In the secret place of his dwelling. And he's calling men and women. To come to that place. And then I will remove my hand. Verse 23. And you will see my back. But my face must not be seen. Dear friends. The psalmist today wants us to. Put that into practice into our lives. When we are so busy with the world and so much of stress in our workplace, stress from the family, difficulties in our finances and relationships, run to the shelter that we have in God where he will cover you with his hand and his feathers, a rock on which you stand covered by God. Well, how can one abide in the presence of God? How is it possible, pastor, where I can rest in the presence of God? Yeah, in this psalm, the psalmist himself reasons out how you can do that. First way we can do that is by loving God. Remember the greatest commandment. Love your God with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind. And then love your neighbor as yourself. And look at what the psalmist says in verse 14. Because he loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue him. Message says, if you hold on to me for dear life. I will get you out of any trouble. Do you love God? Next question. If I tell glory that I love you glory, I love you glory, I can tell hundred times in a day, I love you glory. Is that love? Oh, I love you with all my heart and all my soul. Jesus at the center of it all. Is that love or love is translated into action? I need to show to my wife through various action of mine and she needs to show through various action of hers to truly tell that I love her and you love me. And when we love God, it will reflect in how we live for God on a day-to-day -day basis. And God is lovable, infinitely lovable. He is altogether worthy. He is altogether lovely. And we love because he first loved us. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And gave his life for us. So we have every reason to love the Lord. And yet we forget to love God. And run to God in the times of our struggles. Do you and I love God? If we love God. We will love him in every facet of our lives. Even we will love our neighbor. Because we love God. Richard Wimbrand was a Romanian evangelist. A Lutheran priest. And he, during the world war, was rescuing the Jews. And also around in the Romanian uh, communist country, he was proclaiming the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And because of proclaiming the gospel, the government came and told him, don't preach about Jesus. You can do your social work, but don't preach about Jesus. Richard Wimbrand said, no, I will continue to do the acts of love and also preach about the faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. He was tortured. He was arrested. And put in jail for 14 long years. And he withstood. 
in the jail he started preaching to the other jailers he started writing and he wrote a book called tortured for christ why did he go through this torture because of his deep love for the lord he was beaten he was imprisoned he endured mutilation his body had the scars of the imprisonment and the punishment that he went through and on one occasion he was locked in a large frozen ice box just for loving the lord jesus christ and he showed to us and many many martyrs and the people of god who have been thrown out of their homes because of the gospel has shown to us in their action that they indeed love god we are to show in the day to day dealings of our life when we cheat Uh, the card guy or when we cheat on our taxes we are not loving god we are made in the image of god where we are supposed to obey the government officials when we run through traffic red signals and when we overtake in a dangerous way putting others to danger like the bangalore traffic we are not obeying god dear friends we have the law of god written in our hearts it's not in our mind and that heart law of god has to be translated in every area of our lives do i truly love god if i am in the secret place of god it will affect my behavior it will change the way i do things it will change the way i look at other people i will not use my tongue for belittling other people but i will always use for encouraging other people and the psalmist is telling i am in the secret place of god because i am able to love god and have his qualities in me the second way you can be in the secret place of god is to acknowledge his name psalm 91 verse 14 because he loves me says the lord i will rescue him i will protect him for he acknowledges my name another translation says he knows my name now how many of you know the lord every one of you know the lord that's why you are here but how many of us truly know the lord experientially if i ask you how many of you know the chief minister of karnataka everybody will tell that i know the chief minister of karnataka but if i ask the chief minister's wife do you really know the chief minister she will also say i really know the chief minister not like you people so there are different levels of knowledge and many times knowing christ is a superficial thing for many of us God wants us to get to really know the Lord. When uh Moses was told by God to go to Pharaoh and tell him that my people needs to worship the Lord in the wilderness, send them for a journey. Pharaoh asked Moses, "Who is your Lord? I don't know the Lord." He knows the Lord because the Hebrews are worshiping the Yahweh God, and now Moses has given him awareness that this Lord needs the people to go out and pharaoh outrightly denies and says i do not know the lord and for a world of rebellion and for a world that even though they know the name of god but does not want to acknowledge the lord how did the lord reveal himself to pharaoh he says that outrightly he is not knowing me but i am going to show who i am to pharaoh and god sent the 10 plagues of egypt goshen was protected but Egyptians went through tough times and then the death of the firstborn Pharaoh knew who the Lord is he slowly getting to know the work of God in nature the work of God in his wrath that came to Egypt and in the red sea he knew the Lord's wrath that destroys rebellion and wickedness Pharaoh knew the Lord in a wrong way my question to you and I is Do you know the Lord? I was talking to one dear pastor and he was telling If you all tell me that you know Pastor Shine everybody will tell that I know Pastor Shine because I am your pastor. But what if my son Sam tells me that uh, I know Pastor Shine you will call me Pastor Shine. But what will Sam call me? Does he call me Pastor Shine? He calls me father. There is a special attachment to that calling. and that's where god is calling us not just knowing some god or god who is created us but know him as your father 
call him as your father and you and i know him as our father in the gospel of john chapter 17 jesus called his father father righteous father though the world does not know you i know you and they know that you have sent me the knowledge that jesus had about his father is a different knowledge abba father and god is asking us to come to that knowledge and the psalmist is saying i know him as my father dear friends we can be in ministry we can do god's work and still do not know the lord young samuel was chosen by god and his father and mother uh, dedicated him to the temple after the days of his weaning uh, they brought samuel to the temple right so what did samuel tell to his friends i am going to the temple to serve whom serve the lord so he knew the lord he is staying in the temple and along with eli the high priest and he is the apprentice over there he is performing the duties what eli is teaching him and when the lord speaks to him samuel samuel did he know the lord he never knew the lord so in one sense he knew the lord but in a deeper sense he really did not know the lord he could not discern the voice of god that's what i'm talking about and later the writer of first samuel in chapter 3 and his verse 7 even in chapter 3 the writer says now samuel did not yet know the lord where is samuel in the temple what is he doing serving the lord in previous chapter itself he heard from the lord but the writer says he still did not know the lord and that can be a danger in our own lives why the word of the lord had not yet been revealed to him how do we know the lord how do we know him how are we getting the confidence of calling him abba father through the word of the lord amen if you love the word of god and you meditate on it this is a gateway to know our father and then we have that one on one connection with our lord so how do you abide in the secret place of god love god know god and the thirdly the psalmist says call on god verse 15 he will call on me and i will answer him i will be with him in trouble and i will deliver him and honor him third question do you really call on god when you feel that stomach pain do you call your gynecologist or you call god first when you feel that you do not have money for that fees will you call your dad first or your relative who is rich or will you call on god first many times we come to god as the last resort and the psalmist is telling when i am in the shelter of god it is god whom i call first aj gordon uh he is an amazing theologian and he said you can do more than pray after you have prayed you can do more than pray after you have prayed first pray but you cannot do more than pray until you are prayed and jesus taught us isn't it ask and it shall be answer me ask and it shall be given unto you seek and you will find knock and the door shall be open to you only thing that we know it but many times you and i we do not have the time to call on the lord paul says do not be anxious about anything but in every situation with prayer and petition with thanksgiving present your present your request to god the first thing in any situation for us is to call on god where in the secret place of god know god love god and call on god and the peace of god that passeth all understanding it is not found in every place it is only found in the secret place abiding in god you find the peace of god that passeth all understanding that will guard your hearts and minds in christ jesus he is all sufficient for us and the psalmist is saying i am dwelling in that secret place of god and i will abide over there so open your open once again to that psalm i just want to bring to you some observation before i just move on psalm 91 verse 1 and 2 there is an i who is that i i will say of the lord he is my refuge that i just look at your text you will find it that i is the psalmist and in verse 3 that it changes surely he will save you who is that you 
from verse 3 to 13 uh, it is you so till verse 1 and 2 it is i i will dwell and from 2 3 to 13 it is you you will not tread on the cobra and 10000 may fall at your side so what is it it is the psalmist in verse 1 and 2 talking and proclaiming about the hiding place and when the psalmist is in the hiding place probably a prophet is coming and the prophet is telling to the psalmist since you are in the hiding place of god these are the blessings that are available in the hiding place of god and then look at the last three verses because he loves me says the lord who is speaking over there three voices over here have you observed that who is speaking over there the lord is speaking how is the lord speaking the lord is speaking through the prophet So first the psalmist is acknowledging that he is in the secret place of God and then God sends a prophet and talks to the psalmist that since you are in the secret place of God this is your blessings and then since the psalmist is in the secret place of God the Lord is come to the prophet and the Lord is speaking through the prophet and is telling that I will give you my salvation and I will answer you three voices over here for the ones who are sitting in the secret place of God So when we are in the secret place of God God speaks to us God sends others to speak to us and that's what we find in this psalm so what is the blessings of being in the secret place of God what is the benefit of being in the presence of God number 1 is deliverance read verse 3 and 4 surely he will save you from the fowler snare and from the deadly pestilence he will cover you with his feathers and under his wings you will find refuge his faithfulness will be a shield and your rampart shield and rampart it is like when he is in the presence of god god is like a wall around him shield and rampart so no matter who the enemy is what the battle is he can be rest assured that god is with him and god will protect him so it there is a deliverance that is promised for the one who is in the shelter of the most high in the secret place of god secondly protection is promised over there verse 5 and 6 look at that you will not fear the terror of night so this is protection at which time of the day night reason the text with me okay this is how we learn the bible which time of the day there is protection in the night look at the next one nor the arrow that flies by day so here he is a pro- he is offered a protection day and night look at the next one nor the pestilence was six that stalks in the darkness even in the darkness god is offering protection day protection night protection in the darkness of life there is protection and the next one in verse six nor the plague that destroys at midday so what does the psalmist tell over here through the prophet he is telling that if i am in the shelter of my god in the secret place of god where i love him i know him i call upon the name I am protected 24 bar 7 night day uh, midday darkness noon afternoon I am protected I don't have to worry about anything I'm protected and uh, I'm protected from the attack of the enemies and then in verse 7 and 8 we find the destruction of the wicked uh, if I am in the presence of God a thousand may fall at your side 10000 at your right hand but it will not come near you you will only observe with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked so the greatest enemy of our life will be destroyed when we are in the shelter of the most high who is the greatest enemy of our life the devil will be destroyed every demonic forces will be oppressed amen every oppression that is coming against us will be destroyed when we are in the secret place of god no attack will come near us no enemy's arrows will touch us when we are in the secret place of god can i hear an amen amen praise the lord what a promise over here and in verse 16 god is offering salvation with long life i will satisfy him and show him my salvation praise god aren't you happy for this wonderful psalm yes if you remember during the pandemic this was the psalm that most believers used to confess day and night some believers even went and put it in the door post thinking that the covid-19 will not come 
they say during the world war the believers used to recite the psalm and and the loved ones would send letter with this psalm and they used to recite that during the world war but those who have confessed this psalm have died of covid 19 so what do we say of the psalm those who confess with this psalm die of cancer at the age of 30 so there is a problem there isn't it there is a real problem here you confess all this and god says i will protect you but in real life i am not facing that protection so there is a tension in this psalm there is a real problem in this psalm that we need to understand that's why we need to go back to the life of israel to see how it played out there is no author over here how it played out in the life of israel this psalm and how this psalm played out in the life of jesus otherwise we have a very narrow minded approach to the psalm and when we go through problems we question god god you said this in your verse and why did this happen to me many people question god like that because they don't teach they don't hear the teaching of the whole council of god put this psalm in the life of israel moses when moses was born there was a genocide ordered by pharaoh so all the male children were thrown into river nile as babies innocent babies did the psalm cover that did they experience that protection you tell me yes or no yes or no no moses had to run away from egypt go to midian and he comes back pharaoh does not recognize him nor the hebrews easily accept his leadership three times in the wilderness journey they are taking stones to kill him to death rebel against moses did he get full 100% acceptance from the people no so there is some problem in the psalm which we need to understand then it says in verse 13 you will tread on the lion and the cobra you will trample the great lion and the serpent in the wilderness they rebelled against moses isn't it and god and god sent venomous snakes did they die or did not die did they die or did not die they died so where is the psalm that's where we need to think the word of god and god will answer us and then moses raised a bronze serpent and they looked at the serpent and they but those who are dead are dead sons of korah rebelled and the earth swallowed them out and on the other side when god sent the 10 plagues did god protect goshen and the children of israel yes or no when god destroyed the egyptians in the red sea did god protect the hebrews without any army without any armor did god protect them absolutely so for the children of israel this psalm is 50 50 some places it has been fulfilled some places it has not been fulfilled why because sometimes we suffer the consequences of the first sin there is a sin that is working in this world and because of that first sin of adam every person who is not in christ is making decisions making government rules and because of that there is a spiral of effects on human kind and sometimes god is not the responsible person for covid-19 or anything like that we are suffering the consequences of the sin that happened in the garden of eden yes we are redeemed by the blood of jesus but we are still living in the body of flesh so there is limitations to what god's promises can be fulfilled in this world around us by the way when you talk about treading the cobra serpent what comes to your mind genesis 3:15 it was a promise made in the garden of eden that the seed of the woman will crush the head of the serpent and in fact jesus did that on the cross of calvary amen and jesus said in the gospel of luke that you will tread on scorpions and lions what is it in the power that i have given you my disciples will overcome every attack of the evil one in this world because my holy spirit is going to rest upon you what an amazing psalm 
it looks back it looks forward it looks to the garden of eden it has got even though even the temptation of jesus the devil takes this psalm and he says he will ask his angels to guard you why don't you just jump amazing so this psalm was not fully fulfilled in the life of moses right moving forward come to the life of jesus he is a son of god full of spirit 100% god 100% man divine and human walking in this world and the moment jesus was born king herod he wanted to kill another genocide like moses but did god protect him yes that means jesus is invincible nobody can defeat him he is god nobody can come near him when he did his first preaching people took stones to kill him but jesus could not be touched he just walked away from that place there was a time once people came to throw him from the cliff that he will die but he did not die his time has not come look at the life of jesus he went to the wilderness and the devil tempted him and jesus was victorious over the temptations of the devil wow the psalm is being fulfilled in the life of jesus right 100% it's been fulfilled in the life of Jesus then come to get some money his sweat is becoming droplets of blood he's weighing the weight of the cross on his life he's saying father if it is possible take this cup away from me did the father hear that prayer did the father rescue jesus from the cross yes or no unanswered prayer and on the cross How old was Jesus? With long life the psalm says that I will satisfy him. How old was Jesus? 30 33 years of age and he died at the prime of his life. So to a great extent this psalm was fulfilled in Jesus but in his earthly body and his divinity not fully fulfilled because he died at the age of 33. So what do we understand? This psalm is pointing to something else. while we are in the shelter of the almighty we must understand that many times we are not living a sheltered life on earth yes i am in the shelter of the almighty but i am not living a sheltered life in this world the promise of the psalm is that no accidents can happen to a child of god when i'm talking about accidents which is an oh i didn't know that this will happen to my child god thinking like that everything that happens to a child of god is filtered by the will of god when you are in the shadow of the almighty you're getting me god allows certain things in this fallen world for us to endure so that james says that we may be mature we may be perfected we may come to the image and the likeness of god so no matter when you go through a job loss or a difficulty or medical report you're going through some kind of sickness or whatever it is you must understand it is not an accident for god god has allowed it and what do i do i be in the secret place of god he will give me the grace and he will enable me to endure it and if i am dying that does not mean that my life is cut short paul says one moment you close your eyes that moment you are present with god it's a continuation of our life with long life he will satisfy us for some people not necessarily in this world but there is an eternity salvation because of the death and the resurrection of the lord jesus christ this is not a promise of protection that no adversity will come but nothing accidental will come apart from coming from the loving hands of god in our lives amen it is a promise of god who will be with us in our trouble he identifies with human sufferings and his grace is sufficient for us when we go through the difficulties of life amen so let us commit ourselves into the hands of god sometimes we may not come to terms with some deaths in our lives some sicknesses that we go through and many times i have seen christians believers questioning god and this psalm is an amazing understanding when you look at it in the whole picture of the bible that yes in this world i have a secret place in the hands of god in this world i can call upon him i love him i know his name i am in the shelter of the almighty 
but it is not a blanket protection from any calamities of the world you know that there was a plane crash in nepal and out of those people who died around 71 people died there were five believers and evangelists who had come to india and gone back they came for a mission trip and they went back and they died god allowed that to happen in his sovereign will and god will give that family the grace and when such things happen we don't run away from god we run into the secret place of god where we know him we love him we call upon his name and we will find comfort and refuge maybe some of you are going through good times in your life praise god for that joy season but there are many of you going through difficulty job loss financial struggles may this psalm be a comfort for you so that you can trust him more like jesus on the cross of calvary not my will lord but your will be done and into your hands i commit the situation and let the love of the father come and surround you and guide you during this dark days of some of you that are going through in your life 